Hello everyone, I'm Eddie, and today we'll be talking about Hamiltonian mechanics. So what is Hamiltonian mechanics? Hamiltonian mechanics is a mathematical formulation of classical mechanics that describes systems as points in what is called a phase space. The basic idea here is that, is that in Hamiltonian mechanics, we solve the Hamiltonian equations to, to solve for the phase space flow, which tells us how our system evolves over time. Don't worry if you don't understand what I just said. After this video, you will be a pro in Hamiltonian mechanics. In order to, to understand Hamiltonian mechanics, we need to talk about what I called mathematical arenas. In the real world, we are able to describe the same object in, in, in different languages. We can describe an apple in English as manzana in Spanish, or a bull in Igbo. We are told to describe they're describing the exact same thing, just differently, in different languages. The same thing happens in physics. We can describe the same phenomenon, like an apple falling from a tree, with different mathematical la languages. Some of, the, some of these languages have more ad advantage, advantages than others in, in certain situations. A language you're probably already familiar with is Newtonian mechanics. Newtonian mechanics describes a system with forces, and we solve the time evolution of a system by solving ne Newton's second law, F equals ma. Let's apply Newton's second law to a falling apple. Isaac Newton would, would predict the movements of the falling apple by first writing down all the for forces that act on the apple. The only forces that act on the apple before it falls down is tension and gravity. Tension is the force that the tree pulls on the apple to keep it in place, and gravity is the force that the earth pulls on the apple. Newton's second law tells us that before the apple falls, the forces, the forces are balanced, so there is no acceleration of the apple. But once the force of gravity is greater than the, than the tension force, the apple then begins to fall, and the only force that acts on the apple is gravity. By solving F equals ma, we can get this equation describing how the position of the object evolves over time. In Newtonian mechanics, we use what is called physical space, since it, since it takes place in the physical world we know and love. We use one axis for position and one axis for time. You can track the motion of bodies as points in physical space at some moment in time. If we had two objects, we would have two paths in physical space. Since we, since we live in the physical space, it makes sense that the physical space formation of, of classical mechanics was the first one, since it's more natural and intuitive. However, there are some problems with the physical space formulation. If there are multiple particles in our system, that would mean that there would be multiple forces, and it can be hard to keep track of all the forces in our system. This motivates us to ditch the physical space formalism sometimes, and use what's called a configuration space. Instead of using just one axis for position in general, we can use one position axis for each particle. So if our system contains two particles, we will have one axis for one particle and another axis for, an for another particle. This means that instead of using separate points for our system, we can instead describe our system as just one point. This can be very convenient, since the time evolution of our system will be described as just one path. The price you have to pay is the, is the added dimensions. Even though visualizing configur configuration space can be hard, mathematical calculations can sometimes be easier. Let's see how we can use con configuration space to solve the same apple falling problem that perplexed Newton. Joseph Lagrange would describe the apple as a point in configuration space. Since our system, the apple, only contains one object, Configuration, configuration space will be equivalent to, to physical space. Now, Lagrange hates forces, so instead of drawing forces that act on the apple, he will instead use a different ma mathematical object, called a Lagrangian. The Lagrangian encodes all the forces acting on the object implicitly. You can think of the Lagrangian as a magical function that tells us everything we care about the system in a single line. We can put this Lagrangian into what is called the ordered Lagrange equations, to obtain the equations of motion of the apple. Here's the Lagrangian of the, for the system, and by, and by putting it into the order of Lagrange equations, we obtain this. We can see that we get the exact same formula that, that Newton found, but in more steps. But in many situations, like a pendulum, it is much faster, since we do not have to keep track of all the forces. Something that I want to emphasize 
is that the classical mechanics of configuration space, called Lagrangian mechanics, is a new mathematical arena. It describes the same phenomenon, but with different mathematics. Just like how languages can describe the same things with different words. Now it's time to level things up a bit and talk about Hamiltonian mechanics. We know that Newtonian mechanics is just classical mechanics in the physical space. Lagrangian mechanics is classical me mechanics in configuration space, where we add an axis for each particle. Hamiltonian mechanics goes a step further and adds another axis, not just for each particle position, but for each particle mom momentum as well. It also deletes the time axis and treats time as a parameter. Two particles in 3D space will be described by 18 axes in Hamiltonian mechanics. Again, the space, the space gets larger when we add more axes. This new math mathematical space, where we track the posi posi positions and momenta of particles, is called phase space. Phase space can be thought of as gluing the, configura co the configuration space with the momentum space. You might, you might be wondering why we care enough about the momentum of particles to make it another axis. While it is true that we can find the momentum of a particle by sticking with Newtonian mechanics and even Lagrangian mechanics, Hamiltonian mechanics makes, this, makes the relationship between position, position and momentum much more explicit and much more intuitive by treating them as independent variables. Many quantities in physics like energy and charge will depend on quantities like momentum and position. So it's nice to plot both of them on an axis for convenience. The path that a system travels in phase space is called the phase space flow. You guys may, ha may not ha be convinced just yet as to why we really care about phase space. It often isn't even very practical to solve problems. However, Phase space can give us ge geometrical intuition on problems, and it can serve as a bridge between, between classical mechanics and quantum mechanics. Many formulas in quantum mechanics have analogs in Hamiltonian mechanics, and Hamiltonian mechanics can offer a new perspective onto some classical principles. Hamiltonian mechanics is also the natural math mathematical arena of what is called statist statistical mechanics, where we treat the state of a system probabilistically. In Hamiltonian mechanics, we solve the Hamilton equations to find the phase space flow. Let's see how Alexander Hamilton, I mean William Rowan Hamilton, would solve the apple falling problem. He would first use what's called the Hamiltonian, which describes everything we want to know about our system, like the Lagrangian. He then solved the Hamilton equations to, to get the phase space flow. He then gets this formula. We see that Hamiltonian mechanics made this problem much harder to solve. But, ju but just like Lagrangian mechanics, there can be some benefits. Hamiltonian mechanics changes a second order differential equation to only a first order differential equation. Hamiltonian mechanics also answers some theoretical problems in classical mechanics. And it, it is what is used in quantum mechanics. In our series of Hamiltonian mechanics, we will be learning a complete full semester course of Hamiltonian mechanics by first deriving the Hamilton equations. We will then use the Hamilton equations to, to dive deeper into Hamiltonian mechanics by evaluating the symplectic manifolds, Noether's theorem, the principal function, and more. In conclusion, there are multiple different arenas of classical mechanics. We can describe systems in the intuitive physical space the organized configuration space, or the more complete phase space. We can also add an axis for every possible position and, mom and momentum to get what's called a Hilbert space, an even more general space. A Hilbert space is infinite dimensional for just one particle. This formulation of classical mechanics is called Koopman von Neumann classical mechanics, which, it, which is a story for next time. Thanks for watching, and make sure to like and subscribe. And subscribe. Once again, I'm Eddie, and peace out.